The year was 1939. Europe was on the brink of a monumental shift, a shift that would plunge the world into one of the most devastating conflicts in human history. Europe, still haunted by the memory of the Great War, watched in horror as Germany, led by the ambitious Adolf Hitler, plunged the continent into another devastating conflict. Hitler's vision of a new world order was clear, and his aggressive expansionist policies left little room for peace. Italy, under the iron grip of Benito Mussolini, a charismatic leader who had risen to prominence in the aftermath of World War I, joined forces with Germany, forming the backbone of the Axis powers. Mussolini, inspired by the ancient Roman Empire, sought to restore Italy to its former glory through military conquest and expansion. I promised my nation glory and a return to the grandeur of the Roman Empire. I envisioned a new era of Italian dominance, where our influence would stretch across Europe and beyond. I instilled a sense of national pride and ambition. The people believed in the dream of a powerful Italy, and they rallied behind the cause with fervor and determination. But his dreams of conquest would soon turn into a nightmare for Italy. The initial enthusiasm and support for Mussolini's vision began to wane as the realities of war set in. The early years of the war saw Axis victories, with Germany and Italy making significant advances across Europe. The Axis powers seemed unstoppable, and their victories were celebrated with grand parades and displays of military might. But the tide began to turn. The resilience and determination of the Allied forces started to shift the balance of power. The once invincible Axis powers began to face setbacks and defeats on multiple fronts. The Allied forces, led by Great Britain, the United States, and the Soviet Union, began to push back against the Axis advance. Their coordinated efforts and strategic planning played a crucial role in turning the tide of the war. Italy, with its ill-prepared military, soon found itself on the defensive, facing the full might of the Allied war machine. The Italian forces, despite their initial enthusiasm, were no match for the well-equipped and highly motivated Allied troops. The dream of a new Roman Empire crumbled as Italy struggled to hold its ground. The consequences of Mussolini's ambitions were devastating for Italy. Cities lay in ruins, and the civilian population bore the brunt of the conflict. The war had brought not glory, but suffering and destruction to the Italian people. As the Allied forces advanced, they began to liberate Italian towns and cities. The Italian people, weary of war and disillusioned with Mussolini's promises, greeted the liberators with relief and hope for a better future. Mussolini's downfall was swift and brutal. Captured by Italian partisans, he was executed, marking the end of his regime and the fascist dream. Italy's place in the conflict had been one of ambition and tragedy, a stark reminder of the perils of unchecked power and the human cost of war. The summer of 1943 marked a turning point in the war for Italy. Allied forces, having secured victory in North Africa, set their sights on the soft underbelly of Europe, Italy. Operation Husky, the Allied invasion of Sicily, commenced on July 10, 1943. Thousands of ships carrying troops and equipment crossed the Mediterranean, landing on the beaches of Sicily. The Italian defense was weak, and the island fell to the Allies within a month. The invasion of Sicily had a profound psychological impact on Italy. It demonstrated the vulnerability of Mussolini's regime and ignited a spark of rebellion within the Italian people, who were weary of war and hardship. The Allied invasion of Sicily and the subsequent bombing of Rome sent shockwaves through the Italian government. Mussolini, once considered invincible, was now seen as vulnerable and out of touch with the suffering of his people. On July 25th, 1943, in a dramatic turn of events, the Grand Council of Fascism, the highest decision-making body in Italy, voted to strip me of my power. I was summoned to a meeting with King Victor Emmanuel III, who informed me that I was being dismissed as head of the government. Stunned and humiliated, Mussolini was arrested that very day. The news of Mussolini's arrest spread like wildfire throughout Italy and the world. After his arrest, Mussolini was shuffled between various locations, guarded by Italian soldiers who were unsure of their loyalties in the rapidly changing political landscape. The political turmoil in Italy had created an atmosphere of uncertainty and confusion, making it difficult to determine who could be trusted. Mussolini's captors were constantly on edge, aware that any misstep could lead to dire consequences. He was eventually imprisoned at Campo Imperatore Hotel, 
a ski resort perched atop the Grand Sasso Massif, the highest peak in the Apennines Mountains. The location was chosen for its isolation and natural fortifications, making it an ideal prison for such a high-profile detainee. The hotel, surrounded by rugged terrain and accessible only by a single cable car, seemed an impregnable fortress. It seemed like a secure location, far from the reach of any potential rescuers. The remoteness of the hotel, combined with the harsh mountain environment, made any rescue attempt appear almost impossible. The Italian authorities believed that Mussolini was safely out of reach, hidden away from the prying eyes of his allies and enemies alike. However, Hitler was determined to liberate his fallen comrade. The Fuhrer saw Mussolini's capture as a significant blow to the Axis powers and was resolute in his decision to free him. Hitler's determination was fueled by both strategic and personal reasons as he considered Mussolini not just an ally, but a friend. He tasked Otto Skorzeny, a daring Austrian commando, with planning and executing a rescue operation. Skorzeny, known for his audacity and tactical brilliance, was the perfect choice for such a high-stakes mission. He meticulously planned every detail, understanding that the success of the operation depended on precision and surprise. On September 12, 1943, Skorzeny led a team of German paratroopers and Waffen-SS soldiers in a daring glider landing on a small, precarious plateau near the hotel. The operation, known as the Gran Sasso Raid, was fraught with danger. The gliders had to navigate treacherous mountain winds and land on a narrow strip of land, all while avoiding detection. The soldiers, trained for such high-risk missions, executed the landing with remarkable precision. Their bravery and skill were instrumental in the success of the mission, which would go down in history as one of the most audacious rescues of World War II. The raid was a success. The operation, meticulously planned and executed by German forces, was a daring and bold move that caught everyone by surprise. It was a testament to the precision and efficiency of the German military machine during World War II. Mussolini, completely surprised, was whisked away by Skorzeny and flown to safety. Otto Skorzeny, the audacious SS officer, had pulled off one of the most dramatic rescues of the war. Mussolini, who had been imprisoned by his own people, found himself once again in the hands of his German allies. He was taken to meet Hitler, who convinced him to establish a new fascist republic in northern Italy under the control of the German army. Hitler saw Mussolini as a useful tool to maintain a foothold in Italy, despite the crumbling Axis powers. The meeting was a desperate attempt to salvage what was left of their alliance. This new entity, known as the Italian Social Republic, or more derisively as the Republic of Salo, after the town where its government was headquartered, was a puppet state, completely dependent on German support. The Republic of Salo was a last-ditch effort to maintain fascist control in Italy, but it was clear to everyone that it was a mere shadow of the former Italian state. Mussolini, now a shadow of his former self, tried to reassert his authority, but the Italian people had largely turned against him. The once charismatic leader, who had inspired millions with his fiery speeches and grand visions, was now seen as a traitor and a puppet of the Germans. His attempts to rally support were met with indifference and hostility. He knew his time was running out, and his grip on power was slipping away as the Allied forces advanced northward, liberating Italian cities one by one. The Allies, with their superior numbers and resources, were unstoppable. Each liberated city was a nail in the coffin of Mussolini's regime. The Italian resistance, bolstered by the advancing Allies, grew stronger by the day. My time is running out, and my grip on power is slipping away as the Allied forces advanced northward, liberating Italian cities one by one. The realization of his impending doom weighed heavily on Mussolini. He could see the end of his reign approaching and with it, the end of the fascist dream he had once so fervently championed. The liberation of each city was not just a military victory for the Allies, but a symbolic defeat for Mussolini and his ideology.